And I am so glad that you are here today with me on this beautiful Sunday morning. We are all gathered in our homes and enjoying this time together. I'm happy that you're here. It looks like my unmute all button is back, which is great. Last Sunday, we didn't have it. Um, and I had read online that was because of the update to Zoom 5.0 or whatever, but uh, it looks like it's back on. So that's awesome for today so that we can together speak our um, Lord's prayer and our amens and our passing the peace and all the things we like to say. So as you know, when we are on Zoom, you can mute and unmute yourself with the button in your own bottom left-hand corner. And in the upper right-hand corner is where you can switch from uh, speaker view to gallery view. Gallery view shows you about 25 of us and speaker view shows you someone who's talking or something close to it. Today we are having communion. So see if you have something. I have communion bread here, and this is uh, full of juice that we poured out of a juice box because we didn't have any juice today at our house. So uh, see what you have at your house so that you can celebrate communion when we get to that part of the service. Uh, we have some new music leaders today, so look forward to people singing the hymns and special music. Today we are going to add into the worship service the Gloria Patri and the doxology. If you printed your uh, order of worship when I first sent it on Thursday, it's not in your bulletin, but if you printed it Saturday, it is. Um, so we are going to add that back in. We keep trying to make this more and more like our regular worship service at church, so we're going to add those back in so that we can sing them. This morning begins our summer sermon series, so I'm excited to share with you our new series uh, for this summer. It's going to be great. And uh, now Rod's going to give us a report from session, and then we'll see if anybody else has announcements. Rod? Good morning. Session met this past Wednesday via Zoom, like we've been doing. Uh, for those of you that maybe haven't been by the church building to notice, there is a mailbox now installed uh, at the doorway going into the fellowship hall area uh, for use. So the mailbox has been installed. The church has uh, acquired a new church policy on all of our properties with Church Mutual. And... I would just like to, I, I'm not sure how far to go here because session kind of made a couple different statements. So I'm gonna do it and they can fuss at me if I've overstepped my bounds. They wanted me to give some kind of a, a report on, on the discussions on the COVID-19 issue and are doing things face-to-face -face versus virtually with the, uh, as a church. And so, I would just like to say that session is continuing to evaluate the virtual church versus the in-person church. COVID-19 is very prevalent around us yet today. There is no vaccine. There have been no cures yet available. So in concerns over establishing how to go back to face-to-face -to -face church and concerns over how to police wearing of masks, proper cleaning of the sanctuary, bathrooms, facilities as a whole, and keeping everybody safe. Uh, at this point, session feels that we should continue with the virtual worship until we, till session feels that everybody can return to worship without any concerns over health, over age, over conditions, over policing of how we're going to get along with each other. So at this point, they are still you know, taking all of this into assessment and each month they're reviewing this. And so please bear with us as we try and satisfy the needs of all of our members of the congregation, not just a few. I've also been asked to give a bit of a report on our financials. As of this point in time through the end of May, which is what our financials reports are to session. Uh, it's always, we meet in June, we get the May report. We're 41% of the way through the year. Our pledges are at 60%. Our overall expenses 
are at about 35 percent. Um, our total income for the year is running at about 47 percent. Again, we're only 41 percent of the way through the year, so we're looking good, although the month of May did show that we were short on our income versus our expenses for the month. But overall, things are looking pretty good. And because of that, we are continuing to try to keep our staff employed and plan to continue to do that as long as resources are available. And just a reminder to everybody, if you have made a pledge to the church, please try and continue to send that pledge in so that we can continue to doing the things as a congregation that we like to do. Thank you. Thank you, Rod, for sharing that report from session. Are there other announcements folks have that they would like to make this morning? Unmute yourself or wave your hand. I don't see anybody frantically trying to make an announcement. And so we will then uh, begin the worship service. So I'd invite you to take a moment and center yourself in this time and space. I know that we are not in our sanctuary, but wherever we are gathered in Jesus name is a holy place. If you are able, put your feet on the floor, center yourself, feel your body, center yourself into this moment, and we will take some deep breaths together. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. My friends, whenever we take a moment to pause in the midst of our busy lives and center ourselves, we connect ourselves with the Holy Spirit, with the Lord God who loves us, and with each other as a church community. Please join with me now in the call to worship printed in your order of worship. Worship the Lord with gladness. We come into God's presence with singing. For the Lord our God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. God's faithfulness is to all generations. Let us worship God. Uh, our first hymn is going to be screen shared by Neil. He's going to sing it with Andra. Neil? Never see. 
it's time. Boy, howdy. Thank you, Neil, for leading that song for us today. That was wonderful. All right, we're going to do that prayer of confession. And just as a reminder, after that assurance of pardon, Neil's going to screen share the uh, music so we can sing the Gloria Patri, and then we'll come back together for the passing of the peace. So now let us confess our sins together. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, we have obtained access to the grace in which we stand. With confidence in God's grace, let us confess our sin. Please join with me in that prayer of confession printed in your order of worship. Loving God, without your grace, we are like sheep without a shepherd. Sometimes we are harassed by sin and feel helpless against its power. Sometimes in our sin, we use our own power to harass the helpless. Forgive us, O Lord, and bring us home. Restore us to your flock and fold, we pray. Through Jesus Christ, our good shepherd. Amen. Hear the good news of God's love. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God. Know in your heart today that you are forgiven, my friends, and be at peace. Amen. for that awesome recording. That was awesome. So friends, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. Please turn now to your neighbors on the screen and let us share our peace. Peace, friends. Peace. 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 I copied the wrong bulletin. Peace, Diana. Oh, it's my fault. I gave you Easter on accident. <laughs> <laughs> I get confused still. <laughs> no, I accidentally sent you an Easter bulletin. I just was in the Easter spirit. So. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right, friends. It's time now for a children's sermon, shows and tells. Does anybody have show and tell today? Yes, yes, Aiden is waving her hand. Aiden, tell me what you've got. Well, yesterday I drew some eyes. Nice. One, and I drew this one. Those are cool, nice drawings. Thank you for sharing. All right, other show and tell. Okay, Henry, you want to come? Oh, Henry's slow. Anybody else? We've got one. Okay, what have you got? I started my painting, something that I am pretty proud of. But Very it's, nice. It's going to be a kind of meadow at night. Oh, love it. I love the colors. That's awesome. Who else had show and tell? Okay, Henry. So this is my collection of my favorite Hot Wheel cars. Cool. Hot Wheels in a box. That's awesome. Thank you. Others. Yeah, yeah, Olivia. Okay. So I made this. It's a macrame that I dyed an ombre like effect on it. Cool. Homemade macrame. Nice. Others, unmute yourself or wave your hand. We have, I yes. have these cool sunglasses and um, I don't know if you can see, but they're like shiny red on the outlines and I got them from when I graduated from preschool. 
Those are so neat, Abigail. Thank you. Red apple. What a nice red apple. That's cool. Thank you, Ruth, for showing yeah, us. Yeah, it makes music. <laughs> it has inside. Oh, shake it. I hear it. It's pretty. What a nice thing. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else for show and tell today? I'm looking. I don't see anyone. Okay. Well, if that's the end of show and tell, then we're going to begin um, our sermon. And so I'm going to start a little bit like we do introduce this series, and then Cindy's going to read the scripture. So, you know what? Let's pray. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, as we gather around your word and scripture today, we ask that you would open our minds and hearts, that we might find our place within your story, and that the words that I speak and the meditation of our hearts together might be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. All right, friends. So this morning begins our new summer sermon series, Abraham, Birth of the Covenant. This summer, we will once again return to the deep stories of Genesis, traveling through life with Abraham, who is the patriarch of our faith. This story happens really early within the narrative of God and the creation. Before this, we read about the Garden of Eden, Noah and the flood, and the Tower of Babel. But now things take a turn, and the Lord God focuses God's energy and interest in one family of faith. Cindy Urbanski is going to be our lay leader and read for us Genesis 11, 27 through 12, 9. Am I? Uh, okay. Now, these are the descendants of Tira. Tira was the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran was the father of Lot. Haran died from his father, I'm um, died before his father, Tira, in the land of his birth, in Ur of the Chaldeans. Abram and Nahar took wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahar's wife was Milcah. She was the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah and Iscah. Now Sarai was barren. She had no child. Tira took his son Abram and his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law, Sarai, his son, Abram's wife, and they went out together from Ur of the Chaldeans to go into the land of Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. The days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife, Sarai, and his brother's son, Lot, and all the possessions that they had gathered and the persons whom they had acquired in Haran. And they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the Oak of Morah. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said to, said to you, to your offspring, I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there, he moved on to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. 
and Abram journeyed on by stages toward the Negev. And that's the end. Thank you, uh, Cindy, for reading that. And poor Cindy signed up for Lay Leader in June, not realizing it would be Abraham and all the wonderful names of Genesis. So thank you, Cindy, for being a trooper. So first off, just I want to note that here, Abraham and Sarah are called Abram and Sarai. God's going to change their names later on in the story, and we will get to that. But for matters of clarity and convenience, I'm going to refer to them throughout this sermon series by their later titles, Abraham and Sarah, because that's what we're most used to and most recognizable for us. So the story of Abraham begins in barrenness. This is really significant. Not only have Abraham and Sarah been unable to have a child, the whole creation experiment itself has been barren. God set out a plan for life, but all along the creation and humanity have disappointed and resulted in death instead. The grand experiment has been a failure from sin in Eden to waste in the flood to the pridefulness of Babel. Barrenness is the way of human history so far. We have been literally good for nothing. The creation is barren of hope for redemption, and overall, it is a metaphor for the hopelessness of both God and man. In this moment in Genesis, the focus shifts. The text moves from the world stage to a single family and a single man. Scholar Walter Brueggemann says it best when he writes, the one who calls the worlds into being now makes a second call. This call is specific. Its object is identifiable in history. This call is addressed to aged Abraham and barren Sarah. The purpose of the call is to fashion an alternative community in creation gone awry, to embody in human history the power of the blessings. It is the hope of God that in this new family, all human history can be brought to the unity and harmony intended by the one who calls. God calls to Abraham with a promise. Go from your home and your kindred. Go to a new land, and I will bless you and make of you a nation. The call is to move and to trust. Abraham is 75 years old. Friends, I know there are some among us here today that are near the age of 75. So take a moment and think. Abraham is 75 years old. And Sarah is barren. How can a great nation be formed from this hopeless situation? But at this point in the story, Abraham doesn't ask. He just follows directions. The text tells us that Abraham, along with his nephew Lot and all his possessions, leave Haran and journey on toward the Negev. I'm going to screen share a map and we can get an idea about how far Abraham traveled. So if you look at this map, Abraham's family is originally from here, right? Ur of the Chaldeans. And Abraham and Lot and Abraham's father travel from Ur up here, up the Euphrates River here to Haran. Remember that? It is in Haran where Abraham hears the call from God that he should move along with Sarah. And so they travel from Haran down through this region, right, to the land of Canaan. And he's going to move all throughout this area because he's going to be wandering as he goes through. But we kind of get an idea when we look at this map about where he is going. Okay. <laughs> Stop sharing. So Abraham moves down to there and he sees the Canaanites and he knows that this land that is supposed to be his it's currently occupied by other people. But God appears again and reiterates the promise to your offspring, I will give this land. 
And again, Abraham doesn't question, but builds altars to the Lord and worships God as he journeys through the land. This is where the reading ends for today. And at this point, we might imagine that Abraham and Sarah are amazing people of extreme faith. But as we journey with them through the summer, I think we will find that their story is a whole lot like ours. This is a story of a family. And just like with every family, they struggle to understand the promises of God and their own roles in fulfilling those promises. This is a story of struggle, hardship, trust, and failure. Like so many of us, Abraham and Sarah will have great moments of faith and great moments of failure. But all of this story begins in barrenness. And that's the point I wanna focus on today. It is into barrenness and loss that God speaks to Abraham. It is in the face of great disappointment that God decides to change strategy and try again. When God decides to reclaim creation through a relationship with one family, God does not choose the most prolific family on the block with kids by the dozens. Instead, God chooses barrenness. Abraham and Sarah, in their 70s, childless and alone except for their nephew Lot, the son of Abraham's dead brother. Why these people? Why this family? Why a promise of generations and a people given to those who are so barren of life? In this story, I see God's desire to always reclaim death. God is always moving in barrenness. God is always choosing that which is broken in which to work. God is always moving in ways that are strange and foreign to us. Barrenness is the perfect canvas upon which the Lord can create life, just as death becomes the perfect canvas for resurrection, and doubt becomes the perfect canvas for the birth of the church. In our world today, I continue to see God move in barren and cold places. In the struggle with the coronavirus, we are brought together in new ways. In the death of George Floyd is born the life of a new protest movement. In the temporary suspension of worship, new ways of being church are explored. I saw this movement of God most profoundly this week in the fence that currently surrounds the White House. As you know, in response to the protests in the area, President Trump erected a large black fence around the area to keep the crowds back and safely away from the White House. I am going to screen share some pictures of this. So you can see here the fence, right? Protesters and artists have responded to this fence by creating a canvas, using the fence as a canvas. They have covered it with art, prayers, messages to the president, and tributes to George Floyd. What was originally a symbol of division has become a destination for togetherness and unity. Just like Abraham building an altar in the wilderness, this place has become an altar to our nation's new movement for justice. In a place of barrenness and loss, God has created love and new life. As we follow the story of Abraham and Sarah this summer, we will find that they are people of deep faith, that they are also people who live in the midst of barrenness and struggle to trust the promises of God. So too, we are people living in barrenness who struggle to embrace God's promise of new life in our world. Whenever we are tempted to look at our world in hopelessness, we need to remind ourselves 
that these places of barrenness, hopelessness, and death are the exact places where God is moving. This is what we celebrate as we gather around the communion table. Death becomes life. Barrenness becomes birth. Doubt becomes faith. And so God moves in our world. Amen. Friends, we gather now around that communion table. I invite you to remember that when our risen Lord was with his disciples, he took bread and blessed it, broke it and gave it to them. And as they shared meal around the table, they realized who he was. Our Savior invites everybody. People will come from east and west and north and south, and they will sit together around the table. People will come from all these places to be together with our risen Lord. Please bow your head and I will pray the great prayer of thanksgiving, which will lead then into the Lord's Prayer. Holy God, we praise you. Let the heavens be joyful and the earth be glad. We bless you for creating the whole world, for your promises to your people Israel, and for Jesus Christ in whom your fullness dwells. Born of Mary, he shares our life. Eating with sinners, he welcomes us. Guiding his children, he leads us. Visiting the sick, he heals us. Dying on the cross, he saves us. Risen from the dead, he gives new life. Living with you, he prays for us. With thanksgiving, we take this bread and this cup and proclaim the death and resurrection of our Lord. Receive our sacrifice of praise. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that this meal may be a communion in the body and blood of our Lord. Make us one with Christ and with all who share this feast. Unite us in faith, encourage us with hope, and inspire us to love that we may serve as your faithful disciples until we feast at your table in glory. We praise you, eternal God, through Christ, your word made flesh, in the holy and life-giving spirit, now and forever. Amen. And as our Savior Jesus Christ has taught us, let us now pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth, on earth it is in heaven. It is in heaven. Give us give this us day, this day our daily bread. bread. And forgive, and forgive us, our us our debts as, as we, forgive we forgive our debtors. Our debtors. And lead us, lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us, deliver us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the, and the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. On the night in which he would be betrayed, our Savior took bread, and after giving thanks, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his friends. And he said, take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup and said, this is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Friends, every time we gather together, no matter how we gather together, to eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes. These are the gifts of God, and they are for everybody. Take a moment now and celebrate communion with those who are with you. That's some terrible juice. Oh, <laughs> oh boy, hi. Hi, hi, hi.
Yeah. 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 Henry wants seconds, even though it's bad. Okay. So, friends, I hope that you uh, had friends to celebrate with. And if you are alone, know that we celebrate together around the table as we do um, every month. So, we come now to our time of special music. Today, uh, we have a piano solo from Kathy Truesdale. That was beautiful. Very nice. Thank you for sharing that special music with us. We come now to our time of prayer. I've heard this week prayers for of Thanksgiving for Tara and Amber as their adoption paperwork is now complete and so they're ready for placement. Prayers also of Thanksgiving for them with their family friends visiting. I asked for prayers if you could remember me on Tuesday as I get my stitches out. Um, with my nerve damage down there and stuff, it ends up being extremely painful process. So prayers for me Tuesday as we try to get the stitches out of my leg. Uh, on the chat, I've seen prayers for those that are out of work. Jeff Hartle asks for prayers um, for back pain. And uh, Diana has a joy that we've been praying for her son, Logan. Um, he's been healing and has been sober now for two years and is ready for a liver transplant, which is a real joy. Nancy is, has a joy that her and Bill have celebrated their 49th anniversary this past Friday. So that is a joy, prayers of thanksgiving for that. Uh, Vanessa asked for prayers for um, her great uncle Bob, at the family, her family at the death of her great uncle Bob last week. Uh, unmute yourself if you have a thing you would like to share for joys and concerns today.
or raise your hand and I'll try to unmute you. Joys or concerns, friends? Hmm. Yes, Charlotte. Unmute yourself, Charlotte. It's not letting me unmute you. It's not working. There you go. Paul's birthday is tomorrow. You'll be 37. <laughs> Prayers of Thanksgiving for Paul's birthday tomorrow and the ripe old age of 37. And also for uh, the Brookshire twins, we know their birthday uh, is today and they are two. <laughs> All right, others, unmute yourself or speak. The joy of seeing Rod with his granddaughter. I agree. Joy to see Rod with his granddaughter. Rod, your smile is so big when that granddaughter is in the room. So definitely a joy to see Rod and his granddaughter. Caleb asks for uh, traveling mercies as he heads back to Arkansas for Father's Day and uh, helping with the harvest that begins. Others. Unmute yourself or wave your hands or type it in the chat. I am looking for you. Anybody? Okay, I'm not seeing hands waving. I'm not seeing people unmuted. Here's another in the chat. Um, this is from Marjorie Hagen. Thanks for support for uh, Colleen at Hancock's sale. And she has some dishes that need a good home. Thanks to Marjorie for all that she does for so many friends in our church and community in need. Others today. Okay. I am not seeing frantic hand waving or uh, hearing unmuted people or seeing any more things in the chat. So I'm going to take us now to our time of prayer. Let us once again turn our hearts to the Lord in prayer. Holy God, in this dark and struggling world, we look for signs of your new life moving among us. We pray this day for your life to be born anew in our world where leaders are blind to the suffering of people, open eyes, where folks struggle for peace, bring reconciliation, where there is illness and hurt, bring healing, where there is death and brokenness, bring your promise of life. We pray now for the joys and concerns of our faith community. We continue to pray for those that are out of work, we pray for your healing presence to be with Jeff as he struggles with back pain. We pray for Vanessa's family at the death of her uncle Bob. We ask that your presence would be with them. We pray for safe travels for Caleb as he goes home for Father's Day. We pray for me as I have my stitches out Tuesday that the process would go smoothly. And in the midst of this broken world, Lord, we see so many joys. We thank you for Tara and Amber's adoption process continuing along. We pray for them as they prepare to welcome a child into their home. We thank you for visiting family friends. We thank you that Logan is healing and sober and finally ready for a transplant. What a blessing, Lord. We thank you for Bill and Nancy's 49th anniversary, for birthdays among us, for Paul and the Brookshire twins. We thank you for the joy of family and for the joy of sharing our lives together in this new way, being able to see Rod and his granddaughter. We thank you uh, that Colleen Hancock's estate sale has gone well. And we just give you thanks for Marjorie Hagen and everything that she does to help not only our church community, but those in need in the community abroad. She's a true gift. Lord, we remember those on our prayer list, Colleen and Michael, George Ann and Christine, Logan and CW. Remember our friends in Malawi. We remember everyone that looks for work. We remember our friends who are deployed and those who are just finding out that they will be deployed again. We thank you for your beautiful creation. We pray for this country. We thank you for this church. 
Gracious God, move among us this day in ways that bring renewed hope. We offer all these prayers, spoken and unspoken, in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. We come now to our time of offering, and although I'm not going to pass any sort of virtual plate or make you press a button so I can get your credit card for PayPal, I am going to remind you that uh, it is good to share what we have and that we respond to God's love with the gift of our lives. And so uh, uh, Neil's going to screen share a short hymn from Andra, and then we'll sing the doxology. And I invite you to once again offer your heart to the Lord during this time of offering. service thing. Really special thanks to Neil and Andra and Kathy for all the good work that they've done so that we can make this more and more like our church service at home or at our church home, I guess. So our last hymn is going to be Precious Lord, Take My Hand and Kathy's going to lead it. wonderful. Thank you everybody for this joyous worship service. I am so glad that you could be here today. Know that I love you. Know that God loves you and know that at any point in our lives when we are feeling broken and down and barren, that that is the exact place where God meets us and God moves. Go from forth from this place in peace to love and serve the Lord and be blessed. <laughs>
by the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Yay. Yay. Have a good week, friends. Thank you. Oh.